Welcome. I'm Julie Bacon, and you're listening to the Mindset Coaching for Handlers podcast, a podcast for dog handlers who are on a mission to achieve big goals. Here I share lessons, insights, personal stories, and tools you can apply during your next show, trial, or test to help you strengthen your mental game and hopefully cue more consistently. Be sure to check out the show notes where you'll find details about the episodes, plus important links, including the link to the Dogged Planner and Workbook created just for handlers on a mission. So if you're ready to improve your competitive mindset, get out of your own way, and connect with your dog like never before, then it's time to get comfy, bring an open mind, and work your mindset. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast. Okay, this week we're talking about stress. Oh joy, something no one has in their lives, right? Of course, it's ridiculous. Everybody has stress in their lives and it shows up in all kinds of crazy ways. So we are gonna talk about stress. We're gonna talk about the impacts of stress. And of course, most importantly, like what you can do to mitigate some of that stress. And of course, if you want more of this, this just happens to be the topic of September in our mem- in the Q membership. So if this is a topic that resonates with you, jump on over there and join us if you will. Okay, let's jump in. All right, so what is stress? We think stress is one of those things that we know it when we see it. Of course, that's true. And I think we're all really familiar with negative stress. I don't feel like I have to define any of that. Um, But I will remind us that there is a such thing as a positive stress. What is positive stress, you might add? Well, the best example I have is working out, okay? Where stress, like how we actually build muscle is we we tear down the fibers first. You know, when you're sore, when you work to fatigue, when you are, let's say, like build doing your bicep muscles, right? And you work to the point of you're actually sore the next day. That's actually some of the micro uh, muscle fibers tearing down and then rebuilding. So in that, in that instance, we are putting our muscles under stress for the goal of building them up. Okay. Same is when we put our dogs in new and different situations, right? Taking our dogs to class the very first time, the first time they've ever been in the building, the first time they've ever seen a group of dogs like that, maybe that didn't even look like themselves. That is stressful. That is stressful for our dogs, right? And I mean, as we know, dog parks are stressful, right? Anytime you see like a new group of dogs or you're unsure about your environment, I mean, that is stress. But we don't avoid those stresses, right? We don't avoid working out. Well, you might, (laughs) but we shouldn't. We shouldn't avoid working out. Just like we don't avoid putting our dogs in stressful situations because some of that stress is growth, right? Some of it helps us grow. Some of it puts stressors on the system that in eventually end up growing us or growing our dogs in some really positive way. So done right, Stress can be a really positive thing. And we want to be a, be able to put ourselves under stress, our dogs under stress, so that we can gain strength, maybe even physical strength, gain skills, gain experience, uh, gain awareness of our environment. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that we might put ourselves under stress. And so what we're going to talk about today, though, is mostly on the part of stress that you're familiar, and that is the negative side of stress, right? Um, Because positive stress, no one seems to be having a problem with. Um, But I do think it's a good way to think about it. A trainer long, long ago told me that, you know, dogs have to learn stress. As fight or flight animals, if they're in a stressful situation, they're supposed to either run the heck out of there or fight their way out of there. That it's, it's a, it's a hard thing for them. And so they actually have to learn that like, oh, being in the ring for two minutes is a good thing and it is temporary. And this is not a situation where you need to run out of the ring, my novice dog, um, and or fight your way out of the ring, you know, for those the dogs that are like fear bitey or something or like fear, fear reactive or something like that, right? And of course, I'm choosing 
exaggerated examples, except for the time my dog did leave the ring actually because he was stressed. Um, But I'm using those examples just because I think we can all at least relate or understand what they are. Okay. So learning stress, putting ourselves in those situations, even if they're uncomfortable, can lead to growth. What I want to talk about today, though, is the kind of stress that the typically negative stress that we associated with when someone says, oh, I'm so stressed. They don't mean I'm stressing myself in a good way at the gym. You know, typically they mean it in a negative way. And we want to understand that it not only affects our performance, but as everything runs down the leash and a lot of times up the leash, it can affect our dog's performance as well. And then it affects theirs and ours and theirs and ours because that leash travel is real. Okay. I seem stressed and my dog stresses at me and then I stress at my dog being stressed. Like it's a whole thing. Okay. So we want to understand how stress comes up for us, what that might look like, and then how we can, what I, the word I use is intervene, right? We can't do away with stress. Stress is never going away. I mean, if you want to go like sit in Bali, become a monk and stare at the ocean all day, I think that sounds amazing and very stress-free. But for most of us, that is not in the reality we're living. Okay. It might be a great vacation though. Okay. So when we think about stress, The one thing we have to understand, at least briefly, and I won't bore you because I have definitely talked about it on this podcast, is how stress shows up physically for us. And the reason this matters is so often, probably more often than you think, stress shows up physically before we even realize we're stressed. And what I mean by that is you might get a headache and you don't even realize you've gotten the headache or put yourself in that situation, all of a sudden you have a, a, maybe a headache that comes from like up your neck or something like that, the good old fashioned tension headache. And you might realize like, oh, I must be stressed. Or you get that feeling in your stomach that is a little bit queasy, a little bit nervous. And you're like, oh, I didn't realize I was getting nervous. So sometimes our bodies are our first signal because our minds are so darn busy running here and there to and fro, jumping from topic to topic and all the things we have to do that we aren't checking in with ourselves and we don't realize we're stressed until our body tells on us. Well, the reason some of this is happening in our bodies is because when our minds, our brains see something in the world and we're not sure about it, our frontal cortex, the front part of our brain, the thinking part, the strategy part, the planning part, the part that remembers courses, you know, the part that makes a plan for the day, it sees something in it says like, ooh, this is interesting. Should I be stressed? And it asks the midbrain and the midbrain goes like, Ooh, let me analyze this. Yes, based on our past experience, based on how this went before, based on all the information I have, I think stress is in order. And so it sends a signal to the back of your brain, the lizard brain, the amygdala, the part of your brain that is responsible for involuntary breathing and heartbeats and blood flow and hormone flow and all of those kind of bodily things that keep you upright and moving. And even so that you don't really have to think about walking and talking at the same time, usually, um, it sends a part to that brain and that brain goes, oh my goodness, alert the presses, you know, send up the fire alarm, we are in stress. And when that happens, up to 30% of your blood flow is diverted from your brain, i.e. away from your brain i.e. away from the part of your brain that really, really, really needs your that blood flow because it really be, needs to be able to do some thinking. It also moves that blood flow away from things like your stomach and digestion because it's like not important. We're under attack. Got to get ready to fight or flight. Redirecting blood flow away from brain, away from digestive systems, away from non-essential services, essentially, and to your big muscles, to your heart, starts beating your heart faster, to your lungs, you start breathing faster, perhaps more shallow, um, and floods your body with hormones. Like all of these different processes are happening and it happens fast. It might happen in a split second. And similarly, the same thing happens when you're excited. 
Okay, you get shortness of breath, your heart beats faster, you look, you might jump up and down and clap, right? You might get really happy. You know, you, the same kinds of things happen, which is why I tell people and I remind people that to ask yourself, are you excited or are you in fear? Are you excited or are you stressed? Like, are you nervous? Are you in anxiety? Like, where are you right now? And by the way, the answer could be both. You could be a little bit nervous and a little bit excited, right? That's a real thing. But point being, we have to understand what is happening in our body because it is not just all in our thoughts, okay? It is not. And that's sometimes what makes interrupting our stress response, our anxiety, our fear, our ring nerves difficult because we have to stop all the aspects of it. We have to stop, yes, the thoughts and turn our thoughts around, but we also have to tell our bodies, our systems that it's okay. It's all systems go. It's safe. You can slow down the breathing. You can slow down the heart rate. You can go back to thinking. I really would like to remember that course now, please and thank you. Um, And you can turn it around. Okay. So I need you guys to understand that because as we talk about some strategies to combat stress and to get yourself out of a moment, those physical pieces are going to be important. Okay. The other thing to, to know is there is a difference between acute stress, all right, which might be like that rush before that you get right before you perform and chronic stress, which is stress like ongoing stress, st- stress that lingers is just wearing you down. You know, sometimes it might be something going on in your family and then you got to come to the trial and try to run and try to focus, but you've got this sort of thing, you know, that concept of like, quote, hanging over your head, that idea, that would be more of a chronic stress. And again, we're going to talk more about acute, but a lot of these strategies have their place in combating um, uh, that chronic stress as well. Okay. I don't feel like I really have to tell you how it impacts us as handlers, right? It impacts our dogs. You know, our dogs are I'm going to say glorified tattletales, okay? They will tell on us every time because they know what we're feeling sometimes before we feel it. They, I mean, I had a dog who could tell if I was getting a migraine, you know? Um, They know all kinds of things from health things, but just from simple, just nerves, you know? They know that when we're standing at the gate and we're, you know, two dogs out and we're just kind of staring off into space, they're like, oh, there she went. She's nervous. She's not connected to me anymore. You know, she's somewhere else, wherever she goes in that mind of hers kind of thing. Okay. Just like when we check out on the phone, you know, or check out on an iPad and our dog comes over and knocks it out of our hands, you know, they know. Okay. They know. So obviously it's going to affect our connection. Or it's going to affect our ability to run. It's going to affect all of those things. Okay. Um, and we might not make great decisions. Again, blood flow. We don't even have all of our blood flow in our front frontal part of our brain to make great decisions. So we literally could not be physically able to make the best plans, the best decisions, etc. So it's important. It's important to deal with stress, right? It's important to understand um, what we do to keep stress like under control. Another thing that can come up with stress is this is your stress triggers. Those things that automatically trigger you into a stressful mode. Now we get more into this in the membership. So, but just briefly, it could be anything from a missed contact in agility to late traffic to getting to the trial and not being able to get your ideal parking spot. Sounds like a little thing now, but that can really stress you out. And it can be a trigger to kind of what sends you, if you will, like everybody uses these phrases like, oh, it sent me or I was really over the edge about it or I really, you know, um, had a meltdown about it or whatever. Like these are very dramatic phrases that we use to describe this moment because that's how it feels. So you need to understand what your triggers are. And if you don't, we really need to dive into those um, because being able to predict those triggers or understand that those are triggers for you, you might be able to avoid them, but even better, you'll be able to deal with them when they come up. Okay, hang on one second and I'll be right back. 
Hey everyone, I am so excited to share that we have our first sponsor on the podcast, St. Rocco. You might already know them for their amazing all natural jerky style treats, but did you know they also make entrees and food toppers with the same top notch ingredients? It's true. I've got to be honest, I'm a huge fan of these treats. I use them all the time, whether I'm training, at trials, or even when it's just nail trimming time. My dogs love them and it feels good to support a small business that genuinely cares about our dogs. And there's something special just for you. St. Rocco is giving Q listeners 20% off. Just use the code JB20 at checkout when you order from St. Rocco's treats.shop. That's S-A-I-N-T R-O-C-C-O-S treats.shop code JB20. I will also put a link in the show notes. And I'm back. And by the way, I hope you all are supporting St. Rocco's. They truly are amazing dog treats. I I will let you know when I try the entrees. I'm really excited to try the entrees. Um, but they really are really good dog treats and all kinds of flavors. And the two guys that run it are great. So go try them. Anywho. Okay. So um, I'm also going to put in the show notes a link to a sample stress quiz that you can take. And it will give you a sense of like, how you doing? Like, how are you feeling? Like questions like, you know, on a scale of one to five, you know, how often do you feel overwhelmed during a trial or a show? You know, or do you ever catch yourself worrying about what others think about your performance? Or so, how does that affect you? So I've put a bunch of um, questions in there that you can answer on your own, kind of give you a little score, like the old Cosmo quizzes or whatever. So look for that in the show notes if that's inter- if that's something that interests you in taking a look at. Okay, all right. So let's let's fix it. Let's give you some tips um, to help yourself. Okay. So the first thing is, of course, breathing and relaxation techniques, and. I love that people, when people are like, oh, those don't work. Those are not good. I don't have time to do that. Well, I would beg that from a priority standpoint, you only have time for this. Like you really need to make time for this. You really need to try it and understand the power of, for instance, breath work. Okay. Breath work not is effective in part because it's arguing in the best way because it will win against that amygdala. And it's saying, no, no, no need to make my breathing short and shallow and faster and increase my heart speed. I'm not in danger. Look, look at me. I can take three really deep breaths. And the reason that works is it literally is a physiological signal to your brain that says, could I take these breaths if I, in fact, were being chased by an alligator right now? Like, I don't think so. So obviously, I'm safe. So even if you are, just like before you go in the ring, you're taking several very conscious, (sighs) deep breaths, letting it out, doing it preferably two to three times, you know, or as often as need be, that is really going to help you. And what you'll notice, what I know I notice is whenever I do that, I sort of naturally re-engage with my dog. I naturally start to see the things around me again. I just, I come back to myself. I come back to earth. I come back to the present. And that's really what we're trying to get to because most of our stress exists in the future. It's worrying, right? It's worrying about what will happen. I didn't get the parking spade I want. Does that mean it's going to be harder to crate out of my car? Or I didn't get here on time. Does that mean I missed something? Like what's going to happen? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And we're worried about the future. We're worried about what if. How is this going to affect my run? How is this going to affect the outcomes that I wanted today? Right? Instead of taking a few deep breaths, reminding us to be in the present moment, recalibrating to our process goals, recalibrating to connecting with our dog and really deciding that like, okay, I'm okay, I'm safe. You can just as soon do this when you get excited and you need to bring it down a notch, right? 
related to these music use your music you know music is a great energetic booster but it also can be something that relaxes you or brings you back to a more comfortable state maybe a quieter state maybe a more peaceful state if that's what you need then yeah reach for music so on that playlist that you have don't just have the hype music maybe you need a song or two that is the song that you know is the everything's going to be all right kind of a song Okay, you might need that in the mix too. Okay, so mindfulness, like having a mantra or, you know, relaxing in your car or for three minutes thinking of nothing other than your breath, aka meditation, or going for a walking meditation where you just listen to the sounds and things around you, that mindfulness is really going to help. What's cool about meditation is they find that it has lasting benefits like for the day right? So not just for that moment of maybe crisis or acute stress that you're in, but that lasting that lasting effects on your parasympathetic nervous system's ability to regulate you and to calm you down, right? Because we all know that at no time in history has calm down ever worked to calm someone down, okay? But our parasympathetic nervous system does. And it's the part of ourselves that is responsible for calming and balance and getting things back on that even keel. So think about meditation. Um, creating a stress management routine. So whether this is a routine, i.e. incorporated into your rituals, and maybe the last thing you do before you walk in the ring, you know, includes breathing exercises, or maybe it's something you do in the morning, or maybe like me, you've kind of done a habit stack of your meditation after a workout, you know, then you can kind of, you know, push those things together and create a routine that takes into account your stress management. I also like having a plan that if this happens, what will I do, right? What are the tools that I'm going to reach for? What are the things that I know work for me that I'm going to reach for if I'm stressed, if this happens, if I get too excited, you know, how, what am I going to do? And I think even just thinking through that plan and thinking through what is my call to action for when I, my ring nerves get the best of me or when I get more in anxiety mode. Because chances are, you know, if you're listening to this, you know that there's a part of you that can do this, that can spin, that can get, you know, that can overreact, that can go to that stressful place, that can go to that catastrophic thinking or what one client and I kind of laugh and call our, like the, oh my Godding, you know, where, where, oh my God becomes a verb, you know, I'm, oh my Godding. We know that we can go there. Okay, if you know that you can go there, then what's your plan to get yourself back? What works best? Does breathing work best for you? Does going and sitting in the car and turning on music for five minutes work for you? Does taking a long walk by yourself work for you? Does taking a long walk with your dog work for you? Know what works for you. Know what gets you back to present and gets you back into a state where you can perform. Because None of us really do a good job performing if we're too much or really, quite frankly, too little. Now, every one of us has a different definition of that. You know, what's too much for me, what's, you know, is different than what's too much for somebody else. And for what's too little for me might be just right for somebody else, right? We can't, we can't say that for certainty about one another, but we can learn that and develop the awareness about ourselves. And we can understand what we need. And to me, that is the biggest, most important part of self-care. And again, we're not talking bubble baths. We're not talking, you know, candles, although that's really good for stress management as well. Um, But we are talking about realizing and holding fast to those things that are important to you to get your stress down so that you can perform at the level you know you can. Because at the end of the day, I don't know about you, but we all got goals. We got goals. We got things we want to accomplish. We got stuff we want to do. And the last thing we want is to be in our own way. You know, we don't want to be the reason. I don't, you know, I never want the reason that I can't perform or I mess up a course, I should say, is because I was too stressed. 
and I was, my, my brain wasn't there. I was thinking about other things. I was catastrophizing about something. I wasn't fully present. I want to, if I'm going to fail in the ring, I want to make a mistake or truthfully, I really would prefer my dog make a mistake. So it's not on me at all. <laughs> okay. But th- that's, I don't want to fail because I wasn't, I didn't breathe or I didn't take the time, the three minutes to get myself back in an energetic and mental state where I could perform. To me, that is not an excuse because I control that, right? I can control those things. Those are process goals in the way that they are 100% within my control. So as we're thinking about stress management, like I said, if this is a topic you want to dive in more, come dive in with us in September. It's going to be all stress all the time, uh, which sounds funny to say and probably not very inviting, but you get the point. Um, and But in the meantime, think about what your plan is. Like if I see you at a trial like, and I ask you, hey, what's your stress management plan? I want you to have kind of an answer. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe you're still working on it. Maybe you're working on incorporating into your pre or post run rituals. Um, But be thinking about like, what's your plan if you get stressed and spending some time understanding your triggers You know, if your trigger is toxic people and toxic people at the trial, you see them and you get stressed, what's your plan? What's your plan to deal with that? How are you going to get back to a performance state of mind where you can run your dog in the way that you know you can and in the way they deserve to be run? Because at the end of the day, again, we might not change for ourselves, but we will absolutely change for our dogs. Okay? So, my goal for you is to, every time you step to the line, you're running your dog to the best of both of your abilities, having a great time out there, and your mindset is absolutely where it needs to be. So if stress management, and that could be anxiety, it could be ring nerves, or it could just be your life, or what have you, is getting to you, then we need to work on that. Okay? So work on that this week shoot me a note if you think you got a great plan or you need help with a plan or wherever your plan is. Um, But whatever you're doing this week, I hope it's stress-free and I hope you have a fantastic week with your dogs. Thanks so much for listening to the Mindset Coaching for Handlers podcast with me, Julie Bacon. I am so grateful for your precious time. Check out my Dogged Planner workbook and journal available on Amazon. Just search for Dogged Planner. I also offer monthly membership that's perfect for ongoing support of your awesome goals. Check out theqcoach.com for details or just stop by and check out all the ways you can work on your mindset. And be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at theqcoach and let me know how it's going. Finally, please share, subscribe, and leave a review. This helps us podcasters tremendously. Plus, I know I get my best podcast recommendations from friends. Thanks and have a great week with your dogs.